bananas can stay very snug there. Ah, oh, intoxicating. So I can now do this. Right, so living with a C63. Well, there'd be a lot of things you'd be doing when you live with a C63. And one of them will be looking at it before you drive because it looks fantastic, but there's no time for that. So let's just go for a drive and tell you all about it. This is the best part. Putting the key in and to turn it on, all you need to do is twist it and it will turn on. <laughs> Isn't that the, one of the most brilliant mechanisms in the world? We need to do is twist it and release straight away and it'll turn on. And someone actually commented on one of the videos stating that I was doing it wrong and I didn't believe them. And then yeah, I found out what a fantastic feature that is. Just one of the many great things living with a C63. Of course, the first thing you need to do before driving is putting your seatbelt on, which sounds really silly, but when you put the seatbelt on a C63, it restrains you and it pulls in. Oh, what a brilliant mechanism that is then the next thing you want to do put your foot on the brake put it in drive quite a clunky sensation really like it very tactile now the next thing you need to do is really simple and necessary is to pull the handbrake lever down here and when i bought it the car and i drove off the drive from the guy who very much cherished his c63 i forgot and i drove off down the road with it beeping at me not realizing the handbrake was still on so yeah pull this that's the handbrake and to put it back on get that little foot brake down there right now we're ready to take the world by storm first thing is you'll probably notice about the c63 and what it's like to live with is going to its second home very frequently and that of course is the petrol station um, i am currently just a smidge over one quarter of a tank which doesn't sound very um troublesome but in a C63 it is because basically the fuel warning light comes on as soon as you hit a quarter because that's sort of levels you are with a C63. Loves to go through fuel very, very fast, depending how you drive, of course. But yeah, when you hit that quarter, you really want to get it filled up. Make sure it's up to the brim. Right now, I've been driving for about a couple of minutes. Um, and when the car is cold, you need to treat it a bit of respect, really, because it's quite lethargic and docile. Um, when it's cold it takes about five minutes to kind of warm up and that's when you can start really giving it the beans but right now it's kind of like a, a teenager like myself when I was younger and I used to get woken up you need you're very groggy you're very slow and you, yeah you don't want to be interrupted you want to be treated with respect and you just want to take things slow think of it as the car's just come out of hibernation you just want to ease it into driving you don't want to just thrash it straight away and it's not really good for the engine either so yeah this car just treat it with some respect and let it get up to temperature give it five minutes and it should be ready to go right we just arrived at the petrol station do they have any momentum no they don't again I keep coming back for momentum and it's, there's never any here, so that's a predicament. Uh, I need to find another petrol station to put some 99 Ron on it. So yes, living with a C63 so far, not going so great because even just filling the thing up is becoming a bit of a chore at the moment. Okay, we just arrived at the supermarket where I'm going to do supermarket things and I'll report back to you. Let's just see what it's like to reverse in just to show you guys how easy it is. Put in reverse. And we've got our parking sensors, front and rear, to tell us how close we are to the warning. So I'll beeping at me very ferociously. Oh, there we go. Got there quite a bit quicker than I thought I did. Yeah, you can see it in the mirror. That one there, and then you got one here as well. Bananas acquired. Last shop in milk, yeah. Shopping complete. Perfect place to put my chocolate milk. Yeah. Bananas can stay very snug there. Lovely, look how convenient that is. And the last chocolate milk, what a fantastic surprise. Let's get the window open, have a bit of a listen. Oh yeah. Right. Safety first. 
Don't want those bananas flying everywhere. They get all bruised. Good stuff. Restrain me. Nice. Right, handbrake. Pin to drive. And we'll keep it in controlled efficiency mode. First thing you notice when you're driving the C63 around in your front view, I don't know if this camera will pick it up, but when you're looking forward, so what you can see is the big bonnet haunch that's just like protruding from the bonnet. It's, it's quite a sight really. I'm only sitting like just enough to be able to, to, be able to see it. Living with the C63 and just driving around the roads, like the steering, for example, is it's nice and weighted and it's got a nice feel to it because it is hydraulic. I'm not sure if the regular C-Class C is, but this just feels really nice to drive. It's got, a, it's not too heavy, but I, yeah, for me personally, I, I really like the, the way it is and maneuvering it is, is easy enough for everyday use. Put some windows down, have a listen to that engine. Yeah, that 6.2 litre V8 bellowing off the sides of the houses. It's fantastic. And that's in controlled efficiency mode. Imagine if this was in Sport Plus, you'll be definitely in for rewards, that's for sure. Now just brings you on to the, the comfort side of things. This car in normal town situations, it's not really that bad. The ride isn't too bad, but it is maybe a little bit jiggly at slower speeds like that's the only noticeable thing i do notice about town driving it's very jiggly but it's not uncomfortable whilst we're on the subject of comfort because we actually are in controlled efficiency mode um the gearbox is very relaxed it's very calm cool collected it's very nice to drive it's it's, it's not jerky it's just quite smooth and seamless getting through the gears driving it through town it's very easy to live with. It's only when you're driving it fast and you kick down, um, yeah, controlled efficiency mode. It's very inefficient. It's very slow and dim-witted and takes a long time to kick down. Okay, guys, you now join me on the dual carriageway. I'm on my quest to find some 99 Ron. I'm sure the petrol station I'm heading towards, it has the required fuel that I need but that gives me an opportunity to tell you what it's like to live with on a dual carriageway at 70 miles per hour, which I'm going, oh, no, loads of dirt. Uh, I'm gonna go into cruise control by flicking a switch up here. Very handy, very convenient to use. But yeah, what sort of revs are we doing? So we're doing just a shy of 2000 revs. I'd say about 1900, 1800 revs, 70 miles an hour. So it's not blaring at me, it's, it's pretty quiet. Cruising at 70 miles an hour just seems like a doddle on this car. It seems civilized. Like, there's not really much wind noise. There's not really much tire roll. Even maybe if my camera does pick up, from my perspective and compared to other cars, it really isn't that bad. It just feels probably like a normal C-Class would. It's comfortable on this road. Um, and most surprisingly, the exhaust note is next to non-existent. You just have that constant like V8 rumble in the background. And even though this has had a secondary cat and resonator delete, it's not, you can, you can hardly hear it. It's just a discreet V8 rumble in the background. And it's just, it's nice to listen to. Okay. Doot, doot. Yeah. Men of truth, is there any 99 run at this shell station? I've seen him 140i, he's definitely filling up with 99 run. So I think we may have hit the jackpot here. Lovely.
Ah, yeah, full tank again. Petrol smells so amazing. It's ah, intoxicating. But the question you're all asking for, how much did it cost me to fill up? Well, at the moment, it costs £1.80.9 a litre for V-Power, the 99 Ron stuff, uh, which cost me £83.41, pence, and I've put in 46.11 litres. And this is a 66 litre fuel tank, so yeah, it's not very cheap if you're wondering how much it costs to fill up a C63. Right, stress is over, we've filled up now. Um, it's a good thing you did fill it up today because I'm going to the caffeine machine tomorrow, so it would have been very inconvenient to not have any fuel. I'll report my MPG at the end of the video to show you what sort of you can really expect when you're driving on all sorts of conditions like we are today. So far, we've established that controlled efficiency mode is very um, methodical and very civilized. But don't be fooled because once you switch this car from Comfort to Sport Plus, the car goes from benign to bananas. But you just get that unbelievable overrun, cracks, pops, gear changes are ferocious and you have the, the, the crack from the exhaust whenever you change gear as well and then down, downshifting is just, ah, uh, ah, uh, what's the word, intoxicating. something about this car which just gives gives me a feeling like nothing else has it's it's, it's the dual spit personality i've said it before in other videos like earlier on we were in town we were doing many civilized things and the car was adapting to that situation as a normal car would but as soon as you open the taps up as soon as you change the drive mode and the sport plus mode the car becomes something unlike anything else makes living with this car just become match made in heaven. It really is. It is. It just makes living with this car perfect harmony. That's what I feel like right now. It's I'm on cloud nine. It feels great. It, it's what the car does to me. Even if I am driving around town, I'm, I'm just smiling because it's just got a personality which just makes me feel great all the time. It's unbelievable. And no, it's not a mask I'm wearing, it is actually my real face. I am smiling all the time because I'm just generally having the best time of my life. And that's what living with a C63 is all about. It is fantastic. I know it's expensive to run in terms of fuel in the real world, but it's a small price to pay for when it gives you this amount of happiness and joy. You don't have to be driving silly speeds to enjoy this car. Like, I'm in a village right now and just build the revs up really slowly, listen to the overrun. National is now permitted, so I can now do this. demonstrates what living with a C63 is like but just to sum it up really this car is just pure theatre all the time and the only difference is, is that you are on the stage with the C63 and you're doing the act together like it's 
in perfect sympathy, perfect harmony. It, I just can't put it into words because I don't think words can do this car justice. It's just pure theatre. Pure, pure theatre. And something else I think that's underrated with this car, it doesn't matter what rev range you're at, this is a, t a great tone of this V8 and it whether you're screaming, whether you're pootling along, idling, it doesn't matter what you're doing, the car sounds fantastic all the time and you can enjoy it at any time. Then you've got the power delivery as well, that's definitely worth a mention because it's usable in every day. It's great for overtaking, you don't have to wring its neck to get it places because it's got so much low down torque that everyday scenarios where you need to do a quick overtake is just effortless with this car. One thing we haven't actually um, discussed yet is practicality and creature comforts. So we've got our light switches there, obviously got the handbrake release there. Central display, got the lovely 6.3 V8 badge there and a rev counter. Got a speedometer, which is fantastic and that moves individually, which is nice. Um, we got our fuel there and temperature there and it can all be operated and switched around Pressing these buttons, speedometer, mileage, and other various things. And if you go to the AMG one as well, that tells you individual stuff. But come over here. Obviously, you've got sat nav, which you don't use, courtesy of this control and shift magnet for my telephone. What else have we got? We've got practicality, we've got mm, good sizable space down there. Two cup holders one for my chocolate milk which is very good little controller for our interface well so we got we got another compartment down here which we can uh, do that push it close like that we got a 12 volt socket in here as well door bins are pretty useless because they're very narrow glove box has two shelves which is somewhat spacious and we have the controls for the seats on the door cards which move it many many ways and you've got the memory function there if you've got different people in the car so yeah you just push it backwards and forwards backwards headrest even goes down the bananas are literally having the time of their life but the best part about having a coupe in particular is actually the pan roof which goes all the way back to the back seats as well so that just opens up blind there which goes all the way I can go back yeah it doesn't open all the way back but it still opens a large proportion of the roof and you just get an amazing view out you can star watch or pigeon watch right time to show you the practicality of the C63 in the rear obviously it is a coupe so it's not exactly fantastic but you can get the saloon or the estates, which can do an amazing job of practicality. Right. Come to me. Yeah, so headroom is not very good and neither is legroom really. Um, even though I'm five foot and a half, the room is not very good. So if you, yeah, if you want practicality, get the saloon or the estate, that's for sure. But it's good news if you're a businessman because you do have this little hook. We also have some vents here. Um, we also have two cup holders, little tray and room for a sloth uh, in the back seat, which is probably more um, accustomed to this sort of vehicle size. But for an adult, probably not. In terms of practicality, we got 450 litres of boot space, which is more than adequate. We have a hook here, health pack in there, netting there, this thing, which I've no idea what it is. Um, you've got a lengthy sausage dog door stopper, which fits in snug. We've got two containers full of wood shavings, rabbit hay. So you have two very happy bunnies indeed, knowing that you can transport it in one go. You could probably even get four stacked. Yeah, you probably get four in there. But even so, there's room for even more. 
So what have we learned today in this Living with a C63 video? It is practical. If you need more practicality for the rear, get a saloon or the estate. It's comfortable, it's easy to live with. These seats, I've hardly talked about them, which I normally do, they are really comfortable, even on long journeys. I've got heated seats, I've got all the normal gizmos you need in a regular car. But when you really want to drive something special, or you just want to drive to Tesco, it is the, it is the most enjoyable car ever. Like, it just does everything that you ask of it, plus more. Um, and going back on what I said earlier about the MPG, what did we average today? I think it was 16.7 miles per gallon over like 29 miles. And all things considered, I was driving it like quite aggressively for the, for the most part. So take that into account and do the maths yourself if you can afford the fuel on a C63. But I don't think it's too bad for the nature of the engine and how big it is and how it shouldn't be economical. But it's not too bad, especially in the long run. So I really hope this video has helped you. And I hope you buy one due to this video. That'd be fantastic. If you've got any questions, then please do comment down below. And please do like and subscribe because it gives me a great reflection how the channel is doing. And I might really, really appreciate it because we're pushing towards that 1,000 subscriber mark. That would be amazing. And yeah, just another quick thank you for everyone who has subscribed to that 500 mark. It feels good. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.